This is a beta 58. This beta 58 is into input one of this console. If you notice the faders are down, check, 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 but we can see level on the DM3D. And if we look at the DM7, I have same level on channel one. And there is a FOS text to the right. And that FOS text is being fed from output one of this DM3, showing a complete round, uh, round trip for this signal. Remember to like and subscribe. Hey, how's it going guys? This is Jay with Kinetic. I haven't made a video in a while, but this is one I've been wanting to do for a while. And my friend Mike Kinghorn helped me out today with figuring this puzzle out. And that is, can we use the Yamaha DM3D as a 1608 Rio? And the answer is absolutely, you sure can. A friend of mine named Brian Maddox made a joke on a podcast. He said, you buy a new 1608, and they give you a free mixer. Um, and that's because the DM3D is actually cheaper than a Rio and it'll do 96K. Of course, I'm not advocating to replace Rios with the DM3, but if you're in a pinch and you need extra IO, you can absolutely do it. So let's jump in and let me show you how this works. First though, I'm sorry, let me give you a proof of concept. This is a beta 58. This beta 58 is into input one of this console. If you notice the faders are down, check, 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 but we can see level on the DM3D. And if we look at the DM7, I have same level on channel one, and there is a FOS text to the right, and that FOS text is being fed from output one of this DM3, showing a complete round, uh, round trip for this signal, exiting the desk, hitting the DM7, exiting the DM7, and using the output of the DM3 to feed that FOSTEX. So originally when I was doing this, I, uh, I used the Dante inserts and Mike showed me a better way to do it, which is just treating it like a direct out. So we'll start with the DM7. And if you look right here at my gain, you'll notice plus 30. And if you look at the DM3, you'll notice that I can change my head amp and I have control of that. And that's because the DM3 mounts as a controllable device. As I was recording this video, I realized it might be worth pausing and mentioning that in addition to being able to manipulate the head amp, you can also turn phantom power on and off on the DM3 remotely from the DM7. So if we go into our DM7 here in the Dante setup, you'll notice that I can mount the DM3 as a simple controllable device as if it were any other controllable device. It's not a generic mounted Dante device. And then here in our IO screen, I have all 16 uh, physical inputs of the DM3 and I can manipulate their head amps if I want. And then if I patch that to a channel, I get that same flexibility. And as you can see right there, I'm not actually touching the DM3 at all, but I am controlling the head amp from the DM7. And that's just making sure that the control network on the DM7 is in the same subnet of the control network of the DM3. And if they're just defaulted, you'll be fine. Um, if anybody wants a deeper dive on Dante, just for reference and the sake of saying it for the internet, usually we run static and we have static networks for our primary, secondary, and control. And control usually lives in the, in the primary subnet. For this video, everything is DHCP. I'm only using my primary network. I'm not doing a star network. I kept it very simple to demonstrate this. Again, in this video, it's all DHCP running on one switch, primary network. Of course, the same principles will apply if you are using a static network and a star in a star configuration. Cool, now that I've gave the disclose, disclaimer. Um, so, how do we take a physical input on the DM3 and get it to land on the DM7? So if we go in here and we hit our gear icon, we go into our patch menu and click output. If we scroll right here, we're gonna choose, uh, in this case, Dante one and input one. And then for the outputs, 
we're going to stay in the same page. And I'm going to choose Omni 1, and then that's going to be Dante 1. So you stay in the output page, you don't go into the input page at all, and then that way you're getting direct outs, and this is how you're patching those direct outs. On the console, obviously, uh, I'm just sending my input 1 into a mix, and mix 1 is now being sent out Dante 1, and Dante 1 output is feeding the output of this DM3D. The biggest uh, kind of hiccup you guys are going to run into is just the patching, and Mike Kinghorn helped me through that one. With the inputs, uh, I used to go into the inserts, and insert out, you could select Dante, and that's another way of getting it to land onto another console. But, you know, that's an extra step, and that's not a true direct out. Again, we go into our patch screen, we go into the output section. If it's a, uh, we're trying to get uh, the Dante, uh, our input one out of Dante one, we do it here. And if we're trying to get Dante one from the console to use an Omni output, we scroll all the way to the left and we select Omni one. And again, you have your input field and your Dante field. So that's how that's done. And thank you, Mike Kinghorn for that. And thank you to uh, Brian Maddox for putting the idea in my head. Again, you could totally do it. I'm not saying replace your Rios with it. Just a fun experiment. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Remember to like and subscribe.